30 seconds for the show to piss me off. The Federation, again, I've said this before, would not have created a slave race. Not after everything they went through with Data, and, and, and judging that he was a sentient life form, would they okay the creation of synths? They wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, the Federation is not going to allow synths, which they would have never built in the first place, uh, to help build or rescue, create this armada to go rescue the Romulans. Um, thanks, JJ, uh, from uh, this... You know, yeah, how hard it is as a fan who has loved this 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 universe, who has inspired my imagination uh, for my whole life, to even review this this to even review this show, anything attached to Kurtzman or CBS All Access, um, it's very difficult, and the whole meeting between Raffi, who keeps calling Picard. JL, and drives me crazy every time she does it, uh, about the Federation not wanting to go save the Romulans from uh, JJ Supernova uh, is completely ridiculous. Uh, the Federation absolutely would have done that. The, the, there's the whole idea of the Federation becoming um, xenophobic, uh, just this, it, it's garbage. It is the whole pl that whole plot the, the synthetics, the Mars, the them not wanting to save another race that's facing extinction, even though it was a hated enemy and one of the most dangerous enemies. I mean, there's got to be people in Starfleet who would look at the advantages of helping them, uh, relocating them, and then being able to keep an eye on them. I mean, even the most hardened liners of the admirals would have thought that. But, um, no. Apparently, Picard um, put his job on the line, and then um, uh, the Federation uh, admirals were like, okay, uh, we're going to let you quit. Picard would have never quit. He would have never stopped. Um, this whole scenario should have never happened because the Federation would have never done any of the things they're trying to tell us that the Federation would have done. They wouldn't have become what they're trying to tell us that the Federation would have become. Uh, so it's all horse hockey. It's, it's, it doesn't mean shit to me. Um, but anyway, uh, because of all this uh, nonsense... Uh, Rafi gets a gets a message from from command, and then automatically assumes that she's going to get fired, and then starts yelling at uh, Picard um, because it's his fault. And then we, uh, this is a flashback scene. So then we go back to uh, Rafi's place. You know, she's squatting on some public land somewhere, um, and uh, smoking crack. That's great. That's great. I mean, thanks, CBS. Um, Okay, something that I like, uh, which I'm grasping for at this point. Um, the uh, the camera panning into the board cube, I thought that looked cool. Um, nice graphics. Uh, something I don't think I've talked about before, the, the, the computer terminals being holographic. Okay, controls and terminals being holographic, I can see. Um, don't know exactly how that's easy on the eyes when looking at a view screen that's, that's holographic like that, when you can see right through it, but... You know, I get updates in in canon um, in the way that they present technologies, and I can accept that um, to an extent. I can accept that. I mean, that's kind of what you should expect, actually. Uh, but uh, we get to see Hugh again. It's glad to see him. It's glad to see Hugh. Glad to see that actor. You know, welcome back. Hugh's talking to Soji. Um, I kind of like Soji. Uh, kind of. Uh, I like the actress. She's cute. Um, she's nice to look at. Uh, still feels like we're having some kind of personality disorder in this show. Um, like, part of this show is attempting to be Star Trek, and another part of the show is attempting to be Gilmore Girls in Space. Like, I don't uh, get it. Um, I guess they're trying to grasp to a new audience, make it more... Make it more available to normies or acceptable to normies, I guess. But I mean, that's not your customer base. Your your customer base are Star Trek fans, and many Star Trek fans are looking at this show and just wondering what you're doing. Now, Hugh's position, I can I get um, probably one of the most 
in line positions of a character since um, we last saw him. He was about looking after his people, uh, breaking away from the collective, creating a new life, and he sees the Borg that are being disassembled uh, and reclaimed as, uh, you know, as people. I mean, no matter where they come from, they're, you know, part of his culture, part of his, his species, uh, you know, adapted species, the Borg. Um, so, I actually, I'm okay with, uh, with his story arc and, and where I think they're going with him, his position. So, good thing. So then we flash back to uh, Card and Raffi, and she's run off and pissed at him, and everybody's always pissed at John Luke. Everybody talks down to him. Um, it's all the women, anyway. <laughs> it's just the running theme. Um, and it, this is the thing. If it hadn't been so prevalent in the last five, six, seven, eight years, uh, that this 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 heated misandry that is allowed to happen, you know, misogyny bad, misandry good. Uh, if it hadn't been for this push, this far left push in entertainment, uh, then you know, maybe uh, the interactions between Picard and some of these female co-stars would be taken in a different light. Uh, maybe if the writing had been a little better. Maybe if we cared about these characters, maybe if, uh, I don't know, they were the next generation actors uh, coming back, uh, then, you know, maybe some leeway could be given uh, because we would have understood these characters and if, if these, these characters were written by people who actually understood Star Trek. But they're not. They're not, and we have to accept that. Uh, this is, they're being, you know, this, 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 and are, we have to accept the Discovery and Picard are, are basically being written by buffoons who don't even understand Star Trek. So, um, it's just, it's hard. It's hard for me to, it's hard for me to watch. It's hard for me to deal with. Um, uh, yeah, so that was it. Yeah, you know, she's, he's getting chewed out by her because she lost her job because he quit and then she started smoking crack and then she ran off and became a drunk and a drug addict and, and Picard uncharacteristically just quit Starfleet and then went back to the Went back to the vineyard and stayed there for 14 years. Just this this show. Let, let, let's move forward, shall we? <laughs> and then... <laughs> the Daystrom Institute, Institute... The Daystrom Institute. I can't even speak. Uh, Dr. Jar Jarhardi, Jarani, whatever her name is. Uh, and uh, Commodore O. <laughs> I know everybody's already talked about this. But I know I'm late to the party on this. Um, Commodore O... All right, with 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 ears, <laughs> these huge ass elf ears, wearing sunglasses. Uh, I'm sure everybody's already covered the fact that um, Vulcans have a second set of internal eyelids to protect them because they grew up on a desert planet. Discovery, a desert planet, uh, and uh, they're used to dealing with intense light and intense conditions. Uh, so, why, why? This, this show is laughable. Completely laughable. Uh, Hugh's taking Soji to go see some um, uh, some reclaimed Romulan Borg. Uh, they get stopped by a Blackulan, which is fine. We've seen Blackulans before, and I don't mind there being Blackulans, to be honest. Uh, it's just, uh, just funny to point out, because this show does not know what a Romulan is. They just don't know. They, it's just... And here we begin a, a, a scene that should have been one scene. All right, it, 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 this, this this whole thing uh, with Soji talking to the Romulan Borg person, uh, fortune teller, with a mythology and a just a bunch of garbage that does not make sense, should have been just one scene because they jump cut it every thirty seconds as if it is a subplot that is going to last the entire episode when the whole scene is probably six minutes, maybe twice. Maybe they could have cut it twice. Uh, and going back and forth, uh, but it, it, the, uh, the why would you do that? Why would you take a scene and just cut it up into thirty second bits throughout the whole rest of the episode? Like, what is that? How does that make sense? Is it to like keep people from understanding how inane this scene is? How ridiculous the idea is? <sighs> Borg mythologies, people. That's where we're at. That's CBS All Access. This is Kurtzman Trek. This is not Star Trek. Borg mythologies. Yeah. 
The first jump cut back to the main storyline uh, is Picard and Raffi, and Raffi's doing research. Picard shows up on the her screen and says, oh, you're doing research. And she's like, no, I'm not, while she's smoking her, her Cobra crack leaf, whatever the hell it is. And he goes, I'm sending you everything on the Day Instrument Institute and Bruce Maddox. And she's like, I don't want it. And he sends it anyway. I guess they were trying to show some kind of a, like their best friend kind of camaraderie thing, maybe. I mean, I don't care about Raffi. I don't, I don't care about this character. This character hasn't earned anything. Would have been nicer to see, I don't know, maybe someone from TNG. Maybe a character that we knew and loved and understood. But, um, you know, the writers don't know anything about Star Trek. So they just threw in Crackhead Raffi. Next scene, the card beams onto the Captain Rios' ship, right? Now, first glance at the ship, all right? I'm going to try and compartmentalize this, because overall, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a baby smearing shit across a crib, okay? You know, what was once a beautiful, pristine crib, and then put a terrible baby in there who just spreads its feces everywhere. Like, that's... You know, the crib is Star Trek, and Alex Kurtzman is the baby. And that's, that's how it feels. So I've got to isolate, I, I've got to compartmentalize it as much as I can. The first view of the ship, I actually kind of like the ship. I like the design, the coloring. Um, I really don't have a problem with the ship. What I have a problem with is when Picard beams on, they play uh, the Star Trek, uh, the, the TNG music. They play, uh, why? Why? Uh, that's just simply to go, hey, look, Picard's on a ship again. I have no connection to the ship. I have no familiarity with it. Um, I, I don't trust what you're giving me because of what you have given me with Discovery and what I've seen thus far with Picard. Um, this should, it, you're trying to make me feel like it's Star Trek, and it's not. It just doesn't feel that way. Um, so, you know, it's it's... I'm going to try. All right, let's move on. Captain Rios, sitting in his captain's chair after the, the EMH uh, introduces itself to, to Picard and brings him over, and he's got a hunk of metal sticking out of his arm. He's smoking a cigar because he's cool. That's the first shot we get. This, this guy's cool. Look, he's just hanging out with a piece of metal in his arm, smoking a cigar. Uh, doesn't take any sedatives, just throws some alcohol on it. You know, just pull the chunk of metal out. Nah, I don't want a thermal regenerator. I'm, I'm good. I'm just I'm going to hang out with this, this gash in my arm. Like, are you serious? Like, what? This might have been cool, I guess, uh, to some people. Uh, but it's just... <sighs> This is what uh, the people at CBS All Access, this is what they think men's men are like. This is their interpretation of a man's man. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it makes you think, doesn't it? People that are writing this show. Yeah. After Picard and Rios get to know one another, we go back to Crackhead Raffi, who apparently has had enough crack to... And find something in the files that she was looking through. We know this because the music changes and the tempo, and it's like a woo kind of music. Um, don't really understand what in the hell she found. We don't need to, though, because they just need to insinuate it. You know, you don't be too smart. Don't ask too many questions. This is only CBS. This is only CBS Star Trek. Get some kind of weird dialogue between um, Rios and his one of his holograms. Um, nothing worth mentioning. We head back to Chateau Picard before he heads off to not the Enterprise to go on a not a Star Trek mission, uh, and he's back with um, the uh, the O Romulan, you know, the Humulan, the Irish Romulan. Uh, I, I, I at this point, at this point, I just laugh. It just this this show does not know what a Romulan is, does not know what a Romulan is. But one thing is for sure, the O Romulan, the Humulan Romulan, the woman here, is the most adept, intelligent, and competent of this entire crew. Because when the inept secret service, secret, secret, Tal Shiar, uh, the, the bad gash, Vagash, whatever the fuck they're called, uh, they show up, uh, and instead of, um, instead of being competent, maybe just beaming their victims out uh, to be interrogated or whatnot, uh, they send in a strike team. And this strike team is instantly met by the O'Romulan, who can kick their ass. Kick their ass. Now, 
Romulans are stronger than humans, uh, but these are the Romulans, so why a 90-pound woman is uh, beating the crap out of um, this show, man. You know what it is. This is terrible. Picard uh, is is old. He's old as dirt. I love man Patrick Stewart. I love you. All right, and you 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 did what you could. You did what you could. Uh, you did what you could. But um, yeah. So the old Romulan and the other Humulan like Romulan guy. I don't even know his name. I don't even care about these characters. They're beating the crap out of the <laughs> out of the bad gash. Uh, Romulans that have come in, and um, uh, then all of a sudden there's guns everywhere. Uh, there's guns under every table. Uh, they, you know, they have they have they have phasers everywhere in this place because you never know who's going to break in uh, to to a winery or, or a, you, this show. This show is ridiculous. They capture one of these guys. They tie him to a chair, uh, and he's a moron. He is your typical. Moron, you, you're your low-level thug from a Batman comic. Moron, and um, and then the 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 doctor from the Daystrom Institute shows up. I can't even take her seriously. She looks like she's clueless all the time. She she looks like oh that's what's going on. Did I come at the bad time? I, I just why couldn't we have gotten a good show? Why? Couldn't we have gotten the team back together? Um, why couldn't Admiral Riker have come out of nowhere, you know, with the Enterprise refit or something? So Bucktooth Soy Romulan shows up after uh, Soji's talking to her fake mom and then falls asleep and probably gets an upload or something. I don't know. I have no care for this character as well. Um, I have no care. First off, does this show know what a Romulan is? Because he does not look like a Romulan. He's not Romulan. He, he, he just, he's ugly as fuck, too. I'm sorry. He's ugly as shit. I, I, I'm not gay or nothing. But, you know, what is... I don't understand these shows. I don't understand why they present ugly people. Why are ugly people... I don't understand why these shows promote... I have no interest... It's like they're trying to do some weird re romance storyline between Soji and the Bucktooth Humulan, and I have no care. I just, I don't care about it. Um, but, in the following scene, we get to see uh, Peyton List, who is a gorgeous actress. Uh, uh, I've enjoyed her in quite a few things, including Gotham. Um, and she's playing a Humulan, um, who has the most Romulan attitude uh, than any of the other characters, the Romulan characters written. Um, she's like the only hope. She just doesn't have the correct uh, skin tone or the forehead, uh, but um, she's sexy, so she gets a pass. Yes, I am that base. Peyton gets a pass because she's sexy. So toward the end of the episode, everybody's on Rios' ship. Don't even know the name of it. I guess I should look that up, be more informative in these videos, but I just don't hardly give a damn at this point. Uh, we have Rios, who is, you know, I'm okay. I kind of I kind of like the character of Rios. Um, I'm, you know, just trying to get over that ultra male uh, introduction to him, which was just terrible. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the, the draw the Scott Pilgrim drummers there and, uh, crackhead snake leaf ladies there, Raffi and Picard's there. And, um, before they go off, of course, Picard has to say engage because they're not on the enterprise and this show does not feel like Star Trek, but you've got to act like it is and try and give, uh, try and give those member berries to people, try and create some kind of connection between, uh, the audience that you're not respecting and then the audience that you're trying to attract, uh, Drekkies. So, um, yeah, that's the end of episode three, in my opinion, and let's move on to episode four. Let me start on episode four, and again, like episode three, the first 30 seconds piss me off. Does this show know what a Romulan is? Apparently they do. Apparently they do, because we see a few shots of uh, Romulans. Uh, but they're mixed in with um, Humulans 
and something illins and black illins and uh, just. I hate this show. This show, like Discovery, which gave us the Klingorks. This is why I'm so. This is why I'm so critical uh, on on some of these alien races uh, because I saw what they did with the Klingons, the the Klingorks. I saw what they did, and it was just. Uh, yeah. it, it was an abomination uh, of my favorite science fiction race. Uh, and so I look at the, so I'm being critical of the Romulans. I'm, I'm absolutely and justifiably being critical of the Romulans. And it just feels like this show doesn't know what a Romulan is. But then you see the scene in the beginning where you have some ob Romulans that you would you would think of as Romulans that we have seen the depictions that we have seen of them in previous movies in Star Trek canon, pre CBS All Access, pre Kurtzman, pre JJ. And then we have the smattering of all these. It's like, you know what it feels like to me? It feels like they didn't have the money to hire all the makeup artists. They just, so they just said, you know what? We'll just uh, not put makeup on a bunch of them, and we'll just act like they're Romulans. We'll just pretend that the audience won't notice. And uh, I find that lackluster and lazy. Um, and I'm going to be critical of it. I am going to be critical of anything attached to CBS All Access, anything attached to J.J. Abrams, uh, especially anything under Alex Kurtzman, until uh, the fandom is given a decent Star Trek show. So then Picard meets up with some elves in a tree, some elves living in a big tree. Actually, they're Romulans. They're part of this sisterhood um, that live in a tree. And one of these uh, elves, these uh, elfulans, elfulans living in, a, uh, living in this big tree, is uh, Amara Vang who plays Zani, and uh, she looks like a Vulcan, does not look like a Romulan, um, we'll call her an Elfulan, um, uh, because uh, why not? Amira's sexy, uh, that's a sexy bitch, and yes, I am biased when I see a good good looking sexy bitch, so I'm going to let the Elfulan go, I'm going to let this Elfulan go, I, I just, I like her as an actress, and I think that uh, if she had the proper makeup on, um, that uh, the part would have been... Um, would have been more well received, well received by me, uh, but I like the actress and uh, she's sexy. So, uh, but then they're looking after the little boy uh, Elnor, who's in in Elfulin. Um, we'll get to that later, man, because now they're ripping off Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and then we get a bunch of scenes on the on the ship. Rio and the drummer from Scott Pilgrim and the crackhead and Picard and he's they're in a I hate the show. He's on a holodeck that looks like Chateau Picard and they have a conversation, a couple couple conversations about stuff. Um, and then uh, Elnor comes up, the the Elfulin back on the uh, the reclamation center or not reclamation center the. I hate the show. So back at the Borg Reclamation Center, Soji's uh, trying to play the uh, the Romulan tarot and watching some messages that were sent between the Romulan, the Honkulan. You know what? I'm a honky. I can say that. If a Romulan is too white, I'm calling him a Honkulan. So she's looking at messages that the Honkulan was sending to somebody. And un thankfully, the Honkulan has uh, the right kind of makeup on her forehead, the right forehead riches, you know, a little bit. Not 100% correct, uh, but the wrong skin tone. So she a Honkulan. I think it's only fair that I point out all the discrepancies equally. So Picard shows up on the refugee planet, and he, he looks around, and he's like, John True, John True, to everybody. Thank God they even knew to put that term in there. <sighs> but he sees this one bar, and it has Romulans only on it. What, do these, do they have, like, a lot of different visitors come through this place? Uh, are they xenophobes now? I mean, Romulan culture um, was definitely a bit xenophobic. Uh, they really only trusted their own, and they didn't even trust their own. You know, I mean, Romulans were always suspicious of everyone. So, okay, I can accept that. So he climbs up the old elf tree, uh, up to the Elfulans, and he gets to see Amara again, Zani, 
Don't mind that. Don't mind seeing a little more Amara. Uh, but he runs into um, he runs into an elf masquerading <laughs> as a Romulan. <laughs> this 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 show is so bad. It doesn't it doesn't even know what it wants to be. <laughs> so we'll go back to Soji, the Reclamation Center, talking with Bucktooth Humulin, Honkulin, Bucktooth Honkulin, and uh, uh, they go and have a couple drinks, and then he says he wants to show her something. And we have probably the most ridiculous scene I have ever, ever witnessed um, in Star Trek. Uh, this is not Star Trek, so I guess it doesn't count. But uh, uh, they take their shoes off, <laughs> and then they go sliding up and down a hallway, like dancing about and twirling. And what is this show? What is this crap? What... I, I don't care about Bucktooth Honkulin. I don't care about it. I don't care about this relationship they're trying to do with Soji and him. Um, he is butt ugly. He is butt ugly. If, if, if I had a daughter and my daughter brought that home, I would ground her. You could do better. That, it, it, Bucktooth Honkulin is the most uninteresting Un, I, I don't even want to look at the character when the character comes on scene. I don't even care. Um, I'm just like, oh god, this is this is pee break territory. But I've got to. But this, this the whole he's, they're sliding, they're sliding. This, this what is this show? What is this show? This is not Star Trek. This is a comedy, a bad comedy. My God. Now, I gotta be honest. I'm taking anything that I can from this show to try and derive enjoyment. Rios is quickly becoming that enjoyment. Alright? Um, I actually, I like the control panels. I like the holographic control panels. You know, things that I could see happening in the 24th. I mean, in real world, I could see that happening at like the end of the 21st, 22nd century. You know, this fast as our technology is growing. But in relation to Star Trek, alright, where we had originally... Um, you know, in the in TOS, you know, the the type of technology that was displayed and TNG and things like that. Um, so I can I can dig the holographic panels and the controls on his ship, um, and I I'm kind of enjoying his character. So there you go. There's something I, I, I'm I'm liking. Uh, he picks up on the sensors, and he had mentioned before earlier in the episode that a old Romulan bird of prey had been hijacked and was being used. Now this. This is something that I was looking forward to seeing. And um, we'll just skip to the skip ahead. Later in the episode, you do see this, this old bird of prey. Um, and it, there's a couple updates. I mean, there's a couple tweaks that have been done to it, but the design is basically the same from the from the original, from the from TOS. And I did enjoy that. Um, uh, I don't like how quickly it was demolished. Like, they just shaved off the wing of the damn thing in one hit. But... Um, yeah, I don't think they were. I don't think they were that weak, uh, but I did enjoy that. So there you go. There's a couple things that I did like seeing, uh, and Rios is uh, is kind of growing on me. I do kind of like that character, um, which isn't hard when you have a mess of other characters that I just don't relate to or don't understand or just flat out don't like. So um, credit where credit is due. Digging the Rios character. Don't really have many problems with his ship. I kind of like the design of the ship. I think I said that before. Um, so I'm okay with that. Now, does it feel Star Trek? No. It doesn't feel Star Trek. It feels like science fiction. It feels like, um, you know, a, a, some kind of space science fiction. You know, if it was in another show, I think I, I, I might even get a model of it. Because I do like the design. I think it's pretty slick and cool looking. Um, but, it, you know, this is, you know, why... why why doesn't Picard have access to the Enterprise E or G by this point or whatever they're using? Uh, or again, why hasn't he contacted Worf? He could have an entire squadron of Klingon ships easily, I would think, because of his friendship with Worf and the fact that he's the Terran ambassador to Quanos. Um, but this show doesn't make any sense, so let's move forward. We go back to the planet. Picard's talking with uh, with Amira some more. Which I don't mind. I don't mind seeing her on screen at all. I love that actress. 
actress, nice looking actress, um, and uh, doing the best that she can with the part that she has. Uh, even though I may have a problem with uh, the script and story itself, um, in these scenes in isolation, I like uh, I like Patrick Stewart and uh, Amira Van. Um, I like them in this in these scenes. Uh, they, they there's, there's a chemistry between them. Even uh, Ivan Gora, who's playing um, uh, Elnor, Elnor, <laughs> the Elfielin. <laughs> if this were not Star Trek, if it was, if it did not have the name Star Trek on it, uh, be a kind of cool character. Um, if it were not being pushed as a Romulan, which it is not, that's an Elfielin. This show does not know what Romulans are. It doesn't even understand the universe that it's that the, the writers are writing for. It they, they don't understand it. Uh, but in isolation, again, um, uh, I like uh, I like Evans' portrayal of this elf. Um, I'm not sure if he understands he's playing a Romulan. Or I don't think I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Basically, uh, Picard goes and recruits an elf, and now he has a samurai elf on his uh, on his team of uh, not Star Trek people. So there's that. So I'm in the middle of trying to enjoy the Elfulin and Picard having a conversation when uh, Picard brings up that, I don't know how to explain this, but Data had two offspring. No. That whole... A whole... The cybernetic brain sperm thing sucks. This is awful. It is an awful story. Why is this why is this the main storyline? You all couldn't think of nothing better. Y'all could y'all don't have an imagination over there at CBS. Kurtzman does not have an imagination. Um it, it was, it, I hate this show. I hate this show. It's awful. This is not Star Trek. He's, he's having a conversation with an Elfulin, an elf playing a Romulan in a big old treehouse, big old elf treehouse, talking about his dude, his boy, his android boy who died, what, 15, 20 years ago, uh, that a part of his brain sperm, a positron, was used to create twins, and now he's trying to track down the one twin because the other twin was murdered, uh, but these are his kids. Uh, it's just... What is this show? What is this show? I have been waiting since Enterprise for something Star Trek. Mainstream. The people out there that are the fans that are making fan films and stuff, I mean, good for you. I, I love that. Uh, I love the, the I love some of the fan stuff that's been done. But I've been waiting for a Star Trek series. And then we get we got Discovery. Discovery was the last Jedi of Star Trek. And now you've got this Picard show, Star Trek Picard. It's got Star Trek and Picard thrown on there. Star Trek, Star Trek. It's Star Trek stuff, but it's not Star Trek. It's it's awful. This story sucks. You, you couldn't think of anything else? I could sit down in one night and give you three different ideas that involve the Star Trek universe. Pre JJ, that would have been more recognizable in tone and creativity than this garbage. So Picard, the, the Elfulin says, "Nah, I ain't gonna help you." Picard goes back to the beam in spot and he passes by that bar that we were talking about a couple minutes ago. Uh, you know where they've got the Blackulins and the Honkulins and the Humulins and the actual Romulans and the the whateverulins and the, with the, all the different types of not Romulans that they have in this show. And he sees the Romulans only sign. And he tears it off. Walks into the establishment and sits down. Jean-Luc would have never done that. How many times have we heard Jean-Luc talk about respecting the cultures of native peoples? How many times? How many times was he brought in to be an ambassador? in several different discussions over the course of his career in, in, in TNG. That's the last thing he would have done. What the hell was that? That was SJW Picard, is what that was. 
What, he thinks he Rosa Parks? Are you, what, what, what are you doing? Creating an, intentionally creating confrontation. That is the most unpicard thing that is, that is not, this show does not know what it is, does not understand Star Trek, and doesn't understand the characters that it's writing for. That, that would have never happened. So then, of course, you know, he pisses these people off. And so they want to kill him. I mean, at that point, why not? Because I'm tired of dealing with, with Jake Picard at this point. Um, I'm tired of these writers. I wish they could have jumped through into the writer's room and just kiboshed all the writers along with him. Um, but they don't because the elf feeling shows up. His buddy shows up, Evan, the elf. Evan, the elf, shows up. And, um, you know, it kills, it straight up kills, <laughs> straight up kills one of the Romulans. If this show was not Star Trek, it would be, it would be interesting, to say the least. It would be interesting if this was like Warhammer 40K, right, with space elves and space orcs. That's what Star Trek has become. It's Warhammer 40K in space. Well, it is in space, but you know what I mean. Like, and then... And then they beam back to, to Rio's ship, and Picard gives him crap for killing somebody. When he started a fight, when he disrespected the cult, the native culture, these displaced people who are probably just finding themselves acceptance that this is their new home, and um, their culture, which it does have a level of xenophobia about them, um, and he just doesn't give a damn, and he just tears off their sign and walks on in and takes down. It's, like, you know, it's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of going into somebody's house that you know uh, is very private and just taking a shit on their living room floor. That's what Picard did. This is SJW Picard. I don't understand it. Uh, there's probably some kind of a hidden meaning or hidden message going on here. Yeah, because I know, I know Patrick Stewart leans leans far left. You know, so he's. That shit crazy. He's you know got some Trump derangement syndrome, uh, or the British equivalent of Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, so I guess this translates in uh, somehow. There, there's some kind of message here, um, but all in all, this is not something that Jean Luc would have done at all. Again, in this show, something Jean Luc would not have done. These people do not understand Star Trek. They do not understand these characters. They do not understand this universe. I do not get the. I, what is this show? What is this show? Now, without going into too much detail, I got a soft spot in my heart for the name Narissa. Uh, and uh, Peyton, Peyton's character, her Humulan character, the most Romulan acting Romulan who doesn't look like a Romulan, uh, is Narissa. Uh, and um, Peyton's sexy. And unfortunately, Peyton's character is tied to that soy-based, humulin, buck-toothed, I don't give a damn about his character, humulin, soylin, whatever. Uh, you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. So, uh, Narissa, uh, Romulan, Peyton, mm, Peyton, uh, is in, uh, shows up in uh, Soy Boy's bed, uh, wakes him up, and uh, they have a discussion. <laughs> what is it <laughs> What is it? What is it with these shows and the women just just manhandling men? Now, in this particular scene, I don't care. She was choking buck tooth Hume, soil, and whatever the hell he is. Uh, <laughs> like he was a little bitch. Because really, the character does come up as a little bitch. Uh, so I was cool with that. I thought it was funny. I actually rewound it once or twice because I thought it was funny. Um, but uh, for the sake of explaining what's going on to anyone who might not know, uh, they are... Narissa is trying to find out where they came from, where the these android, not android things from Data's brain sperm, where they came from, uh, and why Soji is on the cube in the first place, and that the goal is to kill them all anyway. Um, but first they have to find out what her mission, mission was, why she came there, and if uh, uh, Bucktooth Soil and, uh, presses her too hard that she might activate like Dodge did, and start whipping the shit out of people and doing 60-yard jumps and acrobatics and all kinds of crazy stuff. God, this show. Uh, but, yeah, she was manhandling him. 
and um, you know, getting him on track, whipping whipping Soy Boy. Good. I'm glad she whipped Soy Boy. Let him know he's got a he, he got a job to do, and the rest ain't taking it. And uh, yeah, props to Peyton. And honestly, you know, I, look, I think I think Peyton List is a sexy actress. Uh, I like her damn near everything she's in. Uh, I really do uh, enjoy her presence on screen uh, as uh, Narissa and um, the her character. Uh, I, I, you know, and it's not just because she's sexy. That has a lot to do with it. Yes, I'm biased when, it, when I'm attracted to a good-looking actress with ability. Um, but uh, it's one of the, one of the most interesting characters on this show, in my opinion. So uh, props to Peyton, and um, but I haven't said it enough times. Uh, props to Amira too, because uh, she she's good. Um, so you know they have they have some actors on this show that have ability. Um, that have a little bit of range and have a good screen presence. Um, so it's not really, uh, you know, and even, um, even Bucktooth Romulan, right? I can't stand that cat. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I wouldn't like him in something else. I do enjoy actors that make me not like them, make me despise them. You know, like the kid that played Joffrey in Game of Thrones. I'll check him out in anything because he made me hate him. The problem here, in my opinion, is not the actor's ability in the show. Uh, it is the script they have been given. And it is the fact that the writers and the creators of this show don't know what Star Trek is. Uh, and don't know how to use these characters. Don't know how to create characters. Don't, they don't, you know, that's what it comes down to. Um... So, yeah, uh, good job to the actors. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying. So this episode ends with uh, the fight with the, um, the Romulan Bird of Prey, the old TOS, kind of revamped, kind of revamped Bird of Prey. And, um, you know, I enjoyed that. I did enjoy that that fight sequence that f for what it was. Uh, I like seeing the old style. Uh, this ship comes out of nowhere that helps with the uh, the fight, and they defeat the the bird of prey, and uh, the ship's going to blow up. They came in to help, and they beam over Jerry Ryan, um, seven of nine. Jerry Ryan, years later from Voyager, you know it's been like what twenty years since Voyager. She got some mileage on her, but Jerry still looks great. Um, you know, I ain't hating. Uh, interested to see if they use her character correctly. I'm interested to see, I'll be honest with you, this wasn't CBS All Access, and it wasn't attached to Alex Kurtzman, and it wasn't in the JJ universe, then I would be very excited to see how Annika had grown since the time of Voyager. Very interested to see how that character had evolved. But I'm fearful, due to the representations of these characters so far in, um, in Picard, and how foreign a lot of them are and how bad the writing is and the story is I don't have much hope but let's see what happens uh, in episode 5 and maybe they'll get something right like I said the only thing that I've seen in the last two episodes that seemed to have been that were, that, that, that were right um, was Hugh Hugh that's it um, I can see where uh, Hugh's position and where he's been I can see Hugh's evolution getting to where he was at um, other than that Everything else is foreign to me. Everything else is foreign. So uh, we'll we'll just um, see what episode five holds. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get these reviews out. Sorry this one's so long. I had to match two into one. Um, I'm still not feeling that well, but uh, I will get the next review out faster. I uh, should be feeling better soon. Thank you to everybody for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, um, and, uh, you know, be good to each other. Peace. There is an old Vulcan proverb, only Nixon could go to China.